Um, I'm back again to do a book review of a book that I actually read quite some time ago. Um, I've wanted to do a review of this book for a while, but I have got a more recent one as in like instant after I finish this book on my Goodreads page, so I will link it below in case you all wanted instant reactions because I feel like this is going to be a lot more retrospective. But before I start, I just want to say where on earth has summer gone? Um, like, I love autumn, so I'm not going to complain too much, but it literally just disappeared over a weekend and now it's cold and I'm in like a pullover and a oh it's just it's very cold and I also apologize if I'm sniffling the whole way through this but being true autumn fashion I have got a cold so I'm all sniffly but candle season's back so that's good but more importantly The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filler this was a really really heartwarming book I really enjoyed it I think it's quite sweet um it's interesting I loved how it was sort of disorganised and sporadic and information was given in random orders but it all kind of linked up and made sense at the end and I really liked that I felt like it stayed quite true to the character and I truly did believe that I was reading the memoirs of one I think it's Matthew yeah of Matthew Holmes our main protagonist um to give a quick summary I don't want to you know give away spoilers but to give a quick summary um uh, Matthew Holmes is the youngest of two brothers. His eldest brother is called Simon, but his eldest brother Simon has Down syndrome and therefore it's almost like Matthew is the eldest brother. It's kind of a role reversal for the two of them. But it's normal, they like, like they get on its family life, there's no issue with it. But then one day they're on holiday and they go out for a walk and accident strikes and um, Simon dies. That's not too much of a spoiler because that is pretty much said on the back. But like, because so, it's all basically about his um, recovery and acceptance and ability to cope with Simon's death throughout his life. Um, both him and his mother contract some sort of um, different mental illnesses. Uh, the mother seems more like she's getting depression, but I could be wrong because he's not gone into as much detail. And uh, Matthew starts to hallucinate Simon predominantly and that's kind of how this story goes and it's just dealing with Simon you know pretty much from the beginning that Matthew has got some form he's in some form of recovery but it skips between all his ages so he's it's almost it's set out like he's trying to tell his story as part of his recovery um that I hopefully is not too much spoilers I think that's kind of given away in the first couple of chapters but I'm sorry if that's spoiled it I'm sorry if I gave any spoilers for anyone I try to be spoiler free but it's really good I don't normally like um books that have any sort of sort of I know this is not like a really particular book but even like Costa book of the year and stuff stuff like that I don't tend to like those sort of books so I was quite surprised um that I enjoyed this as much as I did I definitely wanted to pick it up because I do obviously have an investing interest in mental illness I would be doing a psychology degree if anyone didn't know and I want to possibly go on to go, be a psychologist so I obviously have some invested interest in the subject area and I found it quite interesting to read a book that was written by an author that also has experience of mental illness he was um Nathan Filler was a mental a psychiatric nurse I think I want to say mental health nurse then a psychiatric nurse so um it kind of I don't know it just gave it sort of a bit more realism I felt and a bit more realistic I obviously don't know I have never experienced working in the field yet or I've never experienced suffering with a mental illness so I don't I'm not 100% sure this is how it feel, how it would be but it feels like it's quite close and realistic from the limited knowledge I have um it just I just really enjoyed it I felt it was quite sweet it was quite funny in places it's quite dark in places it's quite sad in places you really sort of feel his journey and see what he's going through and how the whole family is basically having to come to terms with the death of their son while they're like while the mum is kind of having a breakdown and then the other son's having a breakdown and it's it becomes quite a complex moment from that little pinnacle point and it's quite interesting to see how one tiny what would seemingly be, seemingly be insignificant moment in someone's life becomes something so significant. And I don't want, <laughs> I didn't mean that in the sense of like, someone's death is insignificant, because that's not what I meant. What I meant is like, the insignificant moment of just a family holiday and just two brothers going on a walk together shouldn't really, and then how that had such a huge impact on everything else that happened in these people's lives because of that one little thing and how it all spirals. And it's just, it's a really interesting book. Um, as I said, I love the way it's written. I think Nathan Fuller has such a beautiful writing style in this book. It's just so wonderfully constructed. 
Um, I don't really know what else to say. I can't really, the, the main problem I have is I can't really put my finger on what I love so much about this book. I just connected to it kind of instantly. Um, it took me two days to read, which, okay, I was on holiday. So that probably explains either why I was a little bit quicker or a little bit slower. Because I feel like I could have done this in a day if I had one sitting to do it in. But I don't normally get to read in just one sitting anymore. I thought I would have read a lot more like that in the summer, but I just haven't had a chance. I've been so busy. So it's kind of, it took me two sittings. But it was thoroughly worth it. It was such a good book. It just, it really was. And I definitely think it actually deserves the book prize, which is, again, surprising for me. I don't normally like books that have been awarded with prizes. Um, I normally, like, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes they can be quite overrated or they're not normally the genre I like. And this is a human interest stories and not normally the genres I pick up. I'm not a huge human interest story person. There's, my, though my favourite books are always human interest stories. It's very bizarre. I think I like the really good ones, but I feel like a human interest story can become very boring very quickly. So you have to have something, you have to be a very good writer to pull it off, is the point I'm mainly trying to make there. Where I feel like something more like supernatural, dystopian or fantasy has other things going on in the plot to move it along. This didn't really have anything exceptional happen, and so it was Nathan Filler's writing that made it. By the way, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not, but it's Nathan Filler's writing that made this such a good book and it made it interesting, and it made the human interest story really come to life, and I think it might be one of my favourite books. It's definitely one of the best books I've read this year, so thank you, Emma, for buying it for me for my birthday, because it was obviously a very good choice. You obviously know my reading taste very well. I don't know if she's watching, but if you are, just want to let you know. Um, I would give this book a 9 out of 10, to no one's surprise. I think it was absolutely brilliant. I probably wouldn't give it the last month, because I just felt like there was just... There was moments, I suppose, where I felt like it was dragging slightly and I just wanted to get on to the next chapter to find out different things. So I suppose it didn't get the full 10 out of 10, maybe because I, I didn't want to sit and read it in one sitting. I, had to, I wanted to sit and read it in two. I wanted the break in the middle. Um, but yeah, I, it's, I would highly recommend this book. It really, really is good. And I definitely think this is a really good autumn time book. So now we're getting into that season because I imagine with a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or a coffee or whatever hot drink you like to drink, oh, cold drink but you know it's cold at the moment and some candles and a blanket and just sitting down and reading this book would be such an enjoyable experience there you go if anyone else has read the shock of the fall um please leave below in the comments what you think because i am interested to hear other people's opinions on books you know it's always nice to have a discussion but and that is what I thought of Shock of the Fall, and hopefully I will be making more regular videos soon. Hope everyone is well, and I will see you soon. Bye!